If you can get that boat, which is your platform, if you can get it balanced and with your shoulders and your head and moving your tush some, 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 sometimes, uh, you can get that boat balanced, it's fast. Now that's hard to do uh, when the boat's, the boat is a given, but these are all little tricks that are allowed that allow you to balance the boat out. And Brookie can sail the boat. Marguerite, my daughter, Marguerite weighs about 125 pounds. And in the uh, North Americans in Niana, Connecticut, three years ago, she, she balanced her boat out perfectly. She had her double halyard system set at 17. And uh, they sailed 12 races. Uh, even after the ninth race, she was still winning the event after bigger sailors. And she won the ninth race. And then I think she just ran out of mojo. You have to control the boat. You have to make the boat do what, what you want it to do. Okay? So, uh, so by balancing out the boat, you can actually do that. Uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, Christine Darista from Rich's Yacht Club. She one day put her, her uh, uh, gooseneck at 28 inches. And Knucklehead Jim tried to experiment with the same thing and went out on a day like today. And it was really fun. And I could sail it. And coming back downwind, I had so much sail over the leeward side of the boat that I, I dug into the water and bent, bent the spar. So there's a certain like spot, and Miles and I were talking about like 21 is like a magical spot, but then like 24 to move it back to 24, that's 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 good. These hash marks on the boat, you know, 15 for the light air range and 24 are just reference points. You have to Brookie has to set her boat up different than Kevin because you're different different people sailing the same boat, and Connor's got his hand up. How does like where you set the gooseneck, how does that affect like the difference on like good tack on the sunfish and starboard, right? And bad tack is your port tack. How does that affect the difference between like the way the sail performs? Like Well that's so that's a big and, and that's a big comment because some days I go out in the in the sunfish and on starboard tack I'm underpowered. And uh, on port tack, I'm like, I got the boat down. It's really, really balanced because the sail is laying against the mast, and so you're losing a lot of sail energy. Okay, so that's that's one unique thing about the boat. And how does that like affect where you? How does the way the way you set your gooseneck affect how much of an effect that has? Well, it has it's a, it's a huge effect, and that's the type of thing that you have to experiment with. Like on a, on a day like today, I would have my gooseneck set at 21, 22. I would have it. I would have it uh, a single drop in the hal in the halyard. I come down 10 inches, and I would probably experiment with this because the idea is is that you want to go fast. You don't need more, more sail area. You need less. This, this main sheet just goes through, through here, and it goes through a pulley, pulley block, right? Uh, I had someone during a week come in, and uh, they were a smaller sailor, and I was like, get the big block. And so they got, they got the big three-inch hexa ratchet. It gives you more holding power. Here's my hand, and, and, and there's yours, which is, which, which is bigger. So I can, I can grip better. It's maybe not a perfect analogy, but the bigger block holds the line better and gives you more holding power. And so that's a simple amount of physics. Uh, when I was younger, we only used a big three-inch block. And uh, uh, and if you want to take a crew like the cat with, with you, that'd be an interesting thing because they don't like the water. Uh, but they like people. Okay, so... That's, that's reefing. That's reefing, and this here, we just call this a cinch. Now this is something anybody can do. Okay, it's really for uh, for spare line that you've got kicking around in your, in your line kit and a small pulley pulley block, you can, you can do that. 
Yeah, you can you can use any knot you want. Yeah. Because it won't it wouldn't slip. I thought. Yeah. Any so any any knot that you that you want to use, and people have different. Uh, you know, there's personality to the bow. Like you can set it up the way that you want to. Like, don't some people use like a cleat instead of a block? Uh, you can use a cleat, Connor, and that's a good point. If we were sailing in a in a in the in the middle of the ocean and we're out there for six or seven hours, to have a couple of cleats on the deck gives you uh, gives you the ability to rest. There's a fellow who I've invited him to come down here, and he may come the next couple of weeks. His name's Charlie Shipway. He he's a uh, He's an Olympian, and uh, he races the sun, sunfish. And um, he has a single bullseye failure there with his cleat. And it's not what I would use, and I don't really recommend it. You can put uh, a, a clam cleat here, which is the type that's open on the top. So you drop the line in it, and it holds it. And it's in close. You can still get the line out if you want to. Uh, but that gives you a, a chance to rest, whether it's be, being going up wind or in between races. Like, what about like the old sunfish that had like those like hooks? The hook? Yeah, you have to get rid of the hook. No. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the hook hasn't been in existence for a, for a long time. And the hook, if it's in your old boat, if you have an old boat with a metal trim, uh, there's one of the boats here, I think it might be Kate's. Kate, do you have the, uh, the, the orange boat? Yeah. With the, with the, it, and it has the metal, the metal trim, and you and you have the hook here. Yeah. So the hook, uh, when when Kate comes home, and she's got you know bruises on, on her legs, it could be because Kate's been bumping against the hook. So if you can take take the hook out, it's a good thing. You know. Okay. Now, what would be a bad thing with this, Joe? Well, with the more pulleys you add, the more line you have to have. Okay. But from what I've noticed, it's not much more line. You, you need about 40 feet of line, so you go from like 28 to 30 to like 40. And the thing that happens is, Kerry Chandron <laughs> and Miles Diekman are, are approaching the lured mark. Oh no. Oh no. It's <laughs> twice as much main sheet you have to pull in. It's twice as much <laughs> main sheet. So, if you're approaching, you gotta get really busy quick. Because if you don't pull it in, the sail's luffing, and a person that has a single person here can round and maybe make a better rounding. So this is the type of thing you want to either turn on and turn off. How do you turn it on and turn it off? It's pretty easy. All this is is a, is a loop knot here. I, 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 have a simple, I have a simple bridle. So if you see that it's not working for you, in between races, you could just... You could just do this. You could even tie a stopper knot here so it's ready to go. Could you do that on the water? Changing it? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Ready to go. I've actually changed these halyards on the water. I've gone from fully up to, I adjust them almost after every race. I change almost everything on this boat after every race. Now, now Brookie pull. Come on, get it. Get it to the bottom. Okay, now what we're, what we're gonna do, okay, the breeze is up, release the main, main sheet. Now what we're gonna do, uh, our, uh, our, our test pilot from the South Pole John Club can uh, try, try this. Okay, bro. And? Easier. Brooks is easier. Yeah. It's like the same thing on an Opti. On an Opti, you can add that extra block in your main sheet too. I used to have it. You sacrifice a little bit of line, but it makes it a lot easier to pull in when, it, when it's breeze off. Now, Joe was talking about... Don't they also have like a pulley system on like a 420 off of the main sheet? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The normal main sheet, I've had many times where I'm approaching the lured, lured mark, and there's so much things, so many things happening. You know, this, this, this lady's trying to sneak in. This guy is trying to sneak in. This guy says he has room, but he doesn't. 
and I'm, I'm like trying to figure out where am I going to put my boat, and I'm not paying attention to my main sheet. And then I round, and it's wrapped around my feet. And that happens to all of us. So, uh, so uh, I've, I've, uh, I've mentioned to many people, like, boat management is important. Like, if you learn to organize your books, organize your room, uh, organize your life, okay, all these things, they, they make you a fast, faster sailor. Because if your boat is not set up properly, if it's disorganized, if it's, if it's messy, you're not fast. And you may be a great, great sailor, but it's just that your, your, your rope is, is not twisted, it's got a knot in it. So you always, you always have to manage your, manage your boat. Uh, so then, uh, so then I, I did with uh, Miles' boat. You see how there's some black, black lines there? Miles, do you want to share about that a little bit? I'm sorry, share about what? Share, share, share what those reference marks on your lower boom are for. So this right. is Miles Deepman. All right, well, Jim talked earlier about the adjustable gooseneck, and I heard someone, someone asked about it. Someone asked about how it, how it worked and everything. You're next, Kevin. <laughs> Pull you do? I'm gonna pop the thing off this. All right, thanks. So the boom isn't bent. So like Jim said earlier, you know, you adjust this, and the gooseneck will slide along the boat. I can't get mine, it's very rusty, but Jim was saying before that you don't want to go past a certain point. He said that it was very windy. How far did you go, 26? Well, I went to 28 once. And, so, uh, these, these marks are basically to show how far you want to go and how far you don't want to go, right? So the one right here, if you guys can see it, this is at about, what you say, 13? Yeah, 13, 14, 15 inches. 13. You don't want to go any farther than this because then the sails start acting weird, right? The, your main sheet will run all the way back to here. Everything will be slid super far back. You won't be able to head up, that kind of thing. See how different my sail looks now? It's so far back, right? But look how much energy Miles has got in front. If this is the balance point right here and I'll draw an imaginary X, okay? So if that's, that's the balance point there, okay, this is, if we picked up the sunfish and floated it, right? It's, it's, that's, that's the point where it balances, right there. So, Miles, put your hand here, and then we're gonna slide this. Okay, so you see, how much more sail, sail area from here to the top. That's how much more sail area is in, is in front. And that's the seesaw where Kevin Ryan and Brookie are trying to balance each other. Field, that's... You go out, you say, okay, I'm hiking too much, I'm getting pushed, let me move it back a little bit. So light wind, forward, and then back as you can. Light, light wind days, maybe you're like, wow, these people are all moving faster than me, my boat's not going that quick. Slide it over. It looks like we start, we're going way high, we're going to miss it, but as we're getting there and the current starts working on us, it's going to just get us right to that mark perfectly. Right? Now, how do you know when there is current? Any guesses? What about water? What can we look for? Waves. Let's see. A little darker, that's for wind. What do you got? Ripples. Ripples. Yep, you're on the right track. All right, ready? So if you guys come out to the chorus, like you ever see when I'm setting up the Woodwood Mark, what I go do first? You're seeing how I go way out in the bay first before I come back? So what I'm doing first is, right, in the water, there are those buoys, the channel markers, right, the red and green. You guys have seen them before, right, when you're out? The red and green buoys. So, like, when we set up the course, those red and green buoys are out here. And then the boats you go on past up here. Yeah, those are where all the big boats go. That's a terrible big boat. Right? Anyway, that's where the big boats go. So what you can do is, like, what I do, and you can do this on the buoys, Right? If we've got 
our buoy right here in the water. There we go. So if you go up to that buoy and you see ripples, right? And they're all moving this way, all the water is kind of whipping around it. Which way do you think that current's going? Is it going this way or this way? Which way? Going towards fin, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what we want to look for. You can do that on the buoys. You can do that on the weather mark, right? Because what's going to happen to that weather mark? It's going to lean in a direction. Yeah. And whichever way it's leaning, that's the <coughs> way the current's going. Yep. So that little ball looks the buoys like. Have you seen them? They're not really a perfect circle. They're kind of like that, and they've got a little tail on the end for the anchor line, right? So if that buoy is, let's say. This way in the water, right? And you see our ripples are going this way around it. Which way is that current going? Which way, right? So when you guys were doing the pre-race, right? We're setting up the course, we're getting everything ready. What should you check? Should you look for the current? Yeah, right. Because what's the other thing the current does? At the mark, it'll help you. It can help you around, right? Does it matter on the starting line? Yep. So like we haven't had a northerly. We haven't had a northerly yet, have we? Yeah. All right. So, when there's, so every day we've had, guys, right? It's been a northerly or a southerly time. So that means the windward mark is always out by the bank. But what happens when it's northerly? Everything flips, right? So that means instead of the windward mark being out here by the channel, the starting line's out there. So if you know, okay, I've got five seconds before the race starts to get to that line. Right? You have to take that current into account. Remember, the current's going to push you faster. The boat's not going to stop, so it's kind of like being on a conveyor belt. So what's going to happen if you're getting close to that line and you try to stop? What's going to happen? You're going to keep going. That's why currents are going So that's the other thing. On opposite current, it can even push you backwards. You're all right. So, right? so that's why you want to know what the current is. You want to figure it out. So like when we drop the marks, you guys can sail up to that mark and take a peek. Right? All you have to do is sail up to it, look down, you can sail right back down the line. This way you know what's going on. Right? So the current's going to make a big difference. Now here, should we give them the secret local knowledge? Give it to them. All right. Don't tell anyone else. The current in this cove here, where do you think it's stronger? Is it stronger by the beach or out by the bay? Out there, right? So when you guys start the race a lot of the time, you're going to be all the way down here. So, then. Beach, right? So keep that in mind, guys. As we're sailing and heading this way, what's the current going to do? Is it going to get stronger or weaker? Stronger, right? Because so we're heading out towards the bed. We're heading towards the channel of all the big boats. So that's something to keep an eye on as you're out there, right? The current can either help you or hurt you. All right, so that's our current. Yeah. And the next thing is boat positioning or body positioning, right? So how much, who knows how much an opti hull weighs? It's a very oddly specific number. 71, yeah, that's really good. All right, so 71 pounds. How much do all of you guys weigh? How much do you weigh, you think? About 74. About 74, how much do you weigh? Huh? How much do you weigh? Ballpark, total guess. Huh? How much do you weigh? 76. 76, right? So you guys, you're, everyone in here is pretty much heavier than the boat you're sailing, right? So do you think moving your body makes a big difference or a little difference in the boat? A big difference. Big difference. Right? Yeah. We got it. So yeah. So here's our hobby. I think we've gone through this before. That's our that's a drawn hobby. So yeah. So when we're sitting our boat, say right now we're going we're going upwind like this. Close enough. Close enough. Close enough. So that's our sail. So we're going upwind. We want to sit in front of that little trunk. 
way back or right up against it? Right up. Boom. That's great. So, does that change when we're going down with? No. No, that's really good. Because we want to keep here because that's the middle of the boat. So when we're like that, then say it's still water, all four corners of our boat are out of the water. Just like, 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 is an opti really hydrodynamic? Right, it's real hard for a Is it hydrodynamic, right? Those flat sides, that big flat bow, is that fast? No, right? Does it cut through the water at all? No. No, what sound does it make if you go through the water? It goes slap, 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 slap. Is that fast? No. No, right? So like Finn's saying, we want to get those flat spots out of the water. They're going to work against you. So that's why your body position, like Finn's saying, is important. So if we're realizing our bow, well, here's our water. If our boat, well, that's terrible water. That won't work. <laughs> All right, there we go. So the Opti actually does have, Opti does actually have a little bit of curve in the bottom. Tiny bit. Right, so you can get all four corners out. So this right here is like your ideal opti. The corners are just out of the water, the boat's flat. Because what's the fastest way to sail a boat? Flat. Flat, right? So it's not faster to go all the way on the side? No. Yeah, you don't want to have a boat going down. You're now sloppy, you're going really slow and sound like that. Yeah. So now, why is that slow fit? So if you're in the back of the boat trying to go upwind, Right? We're dragging the back of the boat like this. Why is that slow? Because you're putting It's like hitting the brakes on the boat, right? It's like sliding on the brakes as hard as you can, especially in light wind. Does your body position matter more in light wind or heavy wind? What do you think? Light or heavy? I'll accept both actually. Yes, both does matter. Light wind is a little more of that. Right? So light wind, do we have a lot of power to work with or a little bit of power to work with? A little bit. A little bit. So every bit we can get out counts, right? So that's the whole idea. Light wind, we want to do, like Finn said, four corners out, we want as little drag as possible. Right? That's gonna help you a ton. But now in heavy wind, what do we do? Where should we be in heavy wind? Actually, here's a better question. Where should your butt be in heavy wind? Outside the boat. Yeah. Outside, right? So outside, that's right here, correct? Is, is it outside the boat right here? No. Is it out here? Yeah. So out here. So say it's me, uh, totally drawn, but see I'm a little bit outside on the rail, so that I can hike. And here's my legs, so they're going to be in the hiking strap. See how I'm hiking? and I'm holding my rudder, and I'm hiking as good as I could. So now, Finn, are your feet always under the hiking straps? Not always, because when we tap, don't we have to take our, hiking, our feet out of the hiking oh, straps? Oh, yeah, okay, yes. But when you guys are after the tack, right? <laughs> Light wind, heavy wind, medium wind, gusty wind, fluky wind, your feet are always under those straps. Yeah. Because what do the straps let you do? Hike, but what else do the straps do? So the straps let you get out of the boat, but what else do they do? They let you kite. You can kite using them, but they also let you back in the boat, yep. right? You ever used your feet to pull your body back in the boat? Mm -hmm. Right, because where are our feet? They're under those straps, and that means it's across our toes.